What's going on guys, Dan Watson. One of the tools that I use the most often, especially in my video work for weddings, is gonna be a gimbal. It, it has literally changed the type of shooting that I'm able to do, and I just, I love it. It gets me smooth shots. I use it at every wedding. You can also put it on a tripod if they have a quarter 20 screw on the bottom, and it, it's just a great way of getting something very unique and tracking the bride. Another thing that's really nice is if you don't have a good system uh, for autofocus, one thing that is really nice about the gimbal is that you can set your focus point to let's say the bride is 10 feet in front of you and then you just walk with them and you get that super smooth motion and your focus point is always going to be fixed on them and so that even if they're moving you don't have to worry about your autofocus going out because you've set that point. So if you're using cameras like the GH5 as well, which I'm using right now and I use for most of my wedding work, it has a built-in in-body image stabilization. You can get it built into the lens as well. Allows you to use it with a bunch of different lens choices. And, uh, and the autofocus system for tracking isn't that great on that as well. So I can just set my point and allow that. And I'm basically the autofocus is because I'm tracking with my subject and keeping that same distance between them as I would for anything else. So I've got a brand new gimbal in and it is the Moza air three axis gimbal and i am really excited about this because these are just products i use all the time so anytime a new one comes out i'm really anxious to try it and also this thing boasts some pretty crazy features so 5.5 pounds on your gimbal load on this thing so this is one that i definitely wanted to check out so let's take a look i will say that this thing is packaged extremely well the box fits perfectly in this thing And here it is right here. So let's take a look at what this thing offers us. Now, one thing that is awesome, okay, $5.99, that is so inexpensive for a gimbal like this. And also that is gonna include your double handle, it looks like, so that's great. There's a lot of other gimbals that are around that price range, I would say in that $600 to $900 price range. The problem with them is that they don't include that. So that's it, really nice box, really nice packaging. Awesome case right here. Everything is nice and sealed. Okay, I can't believe for 600 bucks you're getting the, the actual gimbal, all the batteries, chargers, case, uh, and the handle. So that's absolutely unbelievable. So if you're looking for something inexpensive, that's gonna be the one to get. And let's take a look at this and then we'll try it out and see if it's really good. Uh, USB cables all packaged right in here. Batteries, one, two, three batteries right here and it looks like you have a root for four in the charger right here and this is actually usb which is kind of interesting right here but that is going to be usb powered it looks like now let's pull open all right so we've cleaned out the case right now this is your lens mount i usually don't use these because i'm not using any heavy lenses because i'm using a panasonic gh5 but if you're using a nice heavy lens on this this is a great thing to use for lens support Here's your gimbal right here. We have the double handles. And then we also have an access bar and it looks like this is the bottom for this right here. And that is how that works. Let's take a look at this and we'll see how this thing installs and I'll come back and show you when I get this thing kind of set up a little bit. All right, so now that we've got things set up, let's take a look around. I've got a Canon 5D Mark IV with a Tamron 24-70 f2.8 VC on here. Uh, this is probably not the setup I'll be using most often. It's gonna be the GH5, which I'm recording this with. Also the Panasonic G7, which is my top mount camera here. But this is a really, really heavy system and so something good to test it out with. Overall, it seems to be holding this thing extremely well. And I haven't set anything up really, but yeah, it's a very, very nice system. I gotta tighten these handles a little bit though. And so let's take a look around at some of the features on these things and some of the things that I like about it, just taking a look so far. So first things first, uh, these mounts right here are, a, this is kind of a slippery material, so I'm a little concerned about how grippy this is gonna be on here, but as soon as you get them really tight, it seems to be holding up just fine. Some of the things that I like, uh, we have a quarter 20 mount on here and also on the two handles. You also have four quarter 20 mounts on each of these. So that looks really, really nice. And we also have another quarter 20 mount right on the back of here, so or on the side right here. So as far as mounting a ton of accessories, 
this is gonna be really, really nice to be able to have all of this stuff on here. So balancing this thing out, I didn't have any issues at all. These tunes seem to be really, really nice for being able to balance this. Even with a heavy camera like this, I've got plenty of room on all the sides. I had to use the, the leftmost point of this mount in order to mount it, but I still have plenty of room here. Something that's nice is I can actually take out the cards while shooting, so that's pretty nice. Uh, plenty of room. I mean, I can pump this thing over like that. This thing still keeps coming loose on me, so that's something I'm not... I might have to tighten this up with an Allen key, so I'm gonna have to do that. Keep that in mind. Also, I love these dual handle setups. Yeah, I highly recommend it because I find that I get much less bounce because as I'm shifting from side to side as I'm walking, it, it basically, the gimbal takes away most of that, whereas when I'm doing a single hand, I get a lot of this, a lot of this bounce. This kind of mechanism right here for getting this on isn't my favorite in the world. You have to unscrew this kind of a bit and then it, it pulls out like that. And so it's not my favorite for setting it up. These are some of my favorite ways of adjusting the gimbals with these set screws. I just find that they work really well. As I adjust these things, I have no issues with the camera kind of falling out as I'm trying to adjust it. It's pretty easy to make micro adjustments on it. So yeah, overall, this thing seems really, really nice. I love having these quarter 20 ports everywhere to be able to set these things up. You also have a handle that you can get a joystick for the thumb, which fits right on here. And it will be really nice for this kind of dual handle system. So we'll take this thing out, have a full review on it, check it out. But I'm gonna be using it from some upcoming shoots. I'm shooting a wedding this weekend. And so I'm gonna be using it for that and we'll see how it performs. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, micro USB port. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything's pretty standard affair on here. We'll have to download an app and see if we can communicate with it directly. It's always a nice feature when they do have that in case you want to set this on a, uh, basically sometimes it's a really nice for a second camera. You can set this thing on a tripod and use it to follow people. We're using a remote control to be able to adjust it. So we'll have to see what kind of tools that they have for that. But overall, this thing seems really, really good in first impressions. And really stay tuned. We're gonna be doing some traveling this week and uh, tons of really cool stuff. I just got this DJI Spark. If you haven't seen the videos on that, check those out as well. Really fun little toy. And we'll be putting that against the Mavic 2 and seeing how that performs. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned, whole lot more to come.